Hey everybody, and uh, welcome to my review for the Master Grade Rezel Type C Defensor A and B unit. And this is quite the kit. Um, here is all of the runners that go with the kit. I think there was over 20, so quite a bit. And then here is all of the options that we can do uh, to have this kit set up just the way we want it. So uh, let's take a look at the accessories. If I can get my little stand here to work. All right, so starting off, uh, let's start with the Defensor A pack. The Defensor A pack comes with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six missile pods altogether. Uh, two of them are grouped up like this, and uh, two are single. And then each one has a missile compartment that you can open. So, quite a bit of missiles. So, like I said, you get two of these. You also get uh, two of these pieces, which again, have our missile pods. But then they also have a, um, I think it's called like a mega beam saber or something, something like that. But it's essentially a gigantic beam saber. Now, the beam effect parts for these guys is pretty insane, uh, at least in my opinion. I haven't ever seen one this big, but goes in like that, and it is actually just about as tall as the unit is itself. Just enormous. Anyways, moving on. We also get, um, well that's actually pretty much it for the A-Pack. Uh, in addition though, we also get a beam rifle, which can have uh, just a collapsible handle, and this is used to peg into the shield. Uh, the beam rifle also has a removable ammo pack. And then in the shield, there's a little gimmick here where we can pull that forward just a little bit. And there's two extra spare ammo clips in the shield. Uh, the shield also has a built-in uh, beam rifle there, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, but other than that, um, it's kind of, I don't know, kind of kind of bland. I think it would look a little better if there was some white. But um, we get some on the side, so it's okay. So... Moving on, we have, uh, on the B backpack, we have two of these gigantic uh, cannons. And again, the cannons are almost as tall as the beam sabers. Um, they don't have a lot of moving parts other than uh, this piece here, which is used to uh, bring it over the Rizal's head, and he can have a handle here that flips down and he can choose to hold on to it that way if he wants to. So we got two of those. He also has uh, two of these guys, which each have a cannon built inside of them. And in this mode, if we look kind of towards the top, um, there are these compartments there and the other one right there under my finger. And those uh, at least when it's in the B configuration, we'll have these little pieces covering them up. Uh, we also get two action based connectors, one for its mobile suit mode, and one that can cradle it while it's in its Wave Rider mode. Uh, we also get two beam sabers. And then uh, located in the actual uh, forearm of the mobile suit, um, 
each each wrist is like this, but there's a beam saber handle in there, and then that I think is like a grenade or a little missile or something. So each each forearm has one uh, of each like that, and we also get quite a bit of uh, stickers, dry transfers, and um, foil stickers. So we get a lot with this kit. The uh, instruction book I thought actually looked pretty cool. It had kind of a really dynamic looking scene on there. Um, kind of more so than just like a kind of blank, boring image. So, let's get into how we can load this guy up. Uh, I'll start with the A pack and then show you how to install the B pack. Um, Oh, you know what? We actually also get one more thing. We get this guy here. And basically, this is a stand to help him um, support himself. You can have him stand with either pack, but this guy uh, just slides in over the back skirt like that. And it kind of acts as a, uh, a third leg almost, just to kind of help him support his weight and stand and not really fall back if you want to use it. I guess for the sake of the review, I'll use it that way. It's not falling over every two seconds while I'm trying to put this stuff on. So, uh, we've got these two packs here, like I mentioned. And these just pig in like that. The other piece will go on like so. We've got these two missile pods here. And those pig on just like that. And now in this configuration, they show him as having a shield. And I'm missing the track, I think, where his shield goes, but it can stay in place like that. And then we can have him clip his beam saber. And this one does have the, the groove in his hand, also uh, likewise in the handle of the gun. Now if you want, you can have a Rezel type uh, or Defensor A pack, um, and it looks pretty cool. It's it's certainly different than the B pack, but um, I thought I was going to like the, the uh, B a lot more, but this one uh, certainly does have some appeal to it. Now if you want, I have tried this, and it takes a little bit of finagling. Um, because these handles are enormous. It does have uh, the groove in the hand, but they don't quite match up. The, the groove, uh, at least I find, is just a little bit smaller than um, what it needs to be. Um, or I mean the groove in the hand is a little bit smaller than what it needs to be. So it doesn't actually clip in place, but you can feel it kind of slide in and you know you got it. All right, and just barely, he can hold this monster beam saber. 
Uh, and a lot of the poses show it as he's holding it with both hands, so I could see how that might be uh, something recommended if you wanted to have him in a pose like that, but um, not the most stable thing, but it's still pretty cool. You know, I, I don't really have uh, a ton of kits that have that. Actually, I don't think I have any kits that have something this big, not even... Um, not even excess. Excess Gundam just has a normal beam saber, so it's kind of laughable, really, um, when you look at it compared to this. So, that is the A pack, which is an option for you if you'd like. Now, the really cool thing is they also gave us the option for the B pack. Um, and at least I think it's, it's very cool because. How often does Bandai give us two kits in one box? What they are almost always likely to do is to sell you like each different variant in its own pack. Uh, case in point, the Strike. You can buy the Strike with its uh, Ale Pack by itself. Or you can buy the Strike with the Sword and uh, I think Launcher set it's called. So. You know, they could have just given you all of those in one box and you could have had everything there, but instead you have to buy two and it's just a pain and a nuisance. Um, but they didn't do that with this one. So actually for once I'm totally pleased and shocked that they actually did that. So what we need to do now uh, to get this equipped for the uh, B pack is actually change these pieces right here. And you can separate the back very carefully so everything doesn't come falling apart and that just slides out and that slides out and then these pieces can come off and the reason we're doing this is because the uh, gigantic uh, beam cannons that go on the back actually mount to those pieces so these ones have holes in them that we can mount to so that'll slide on like so and the same for this side and then this will just slide back there and we can slide this one back and lock that in place a lot of fiddling with this kit. There's a lot of, you get something just right and then you gotta kinda start all over again because it likes to move around on you. Anyways, so let's start off with these cannons here. Very big, and then they just have this peg right here. And then each side pegs, actually we gotta There is one. And we get our second one in. And it's kind of goofy getting the, um, the configuration just right on these little uh, hinge pieces. But anyways, the cannons mount on the back just like that. They make them much taller now. Ridiculously taller. Like you have to stack this guy next to your perfect grades. He's so much taller. Get that readjusted. And next we're going to put these little cannon pods on his back. And they are identical so you don't really have to remember which is one and which is the other. those mount on there just like so and for the last part we'll cover up these spots up here I showed you and these almost just sit in here due to like 
gravity. There's not really any friction that holds them in place, which makes it a lot easier when you're trying to take them out. And there he is with his B configuration. Now, let's say you want to have him in a pose where he's firing off these cannons. You just bring them forward and drop the handle down like so. And we've got it set up pretty much perfect, so if you want, you can just extend his arm out and have it held. Now, in at least one other version of this I saw, he wasn't actually holding on to it, they just came out in front of him. And if you want to, you can certainly just do that as well. So, as far as what you get for the money, this is this gets a little bit more expensive. It's uh, certainly not cheap. I, I think, honestly, I don't even remember what I paid for it. I pre-ordered it so long ago, but I think I think it'll run you about seventy bucks, which for a Master Grade is is sliding more towards the expensive side. But I think when you consider the uh, cost value of what you actually get for the kit um, it's definitely worth the purchase. Uh, let's take a look at it now in uh, its Wave Rider mode. <clears throat> Alright and uh, here we can see the Rizzo fully transformed and uh, I didn't want to show you guys the the transformation sequence for a couple of reasons. Um, I did it twice so far I timed myself each time and it took a little under 20 minutes uh, now this is the first Master Grade uh, Rezel that I've built and uh, maybe if you have the other ones you can get your time to do it a little bit quicker but um, a lot of fiddling to get it to look like this. There's a lot of uh, you know two steps forward one step back kind of thing as you get something adjusted and then uh, get it right where you want it but then you didn't realize that you just knocked something you did earlier out of place so that uh, that actually can be a little frustrating um, it's probably the most frustrating, uh, transformation I've ever done. However, you cannot argue with the results. Um, transform this kit looks, I think, very cool. Now, uh, one thing that I did, at least with mine, is, uh, right here you can still see his hands. Uh, the instructions say to just pull the hands out and, uh, leave them be. But I, actually, I don't really mind it. I kind of think it just, it kind of adds more to a sense of realism. I mean, his hands aren't getting sucked in anywhere, so um, you can kind of tell that by building the model that that would never happen, so why not just leave him in? So anyways, uh, lots of thrusters. I think there's like 15 or 16 or something like that on this kit. Um, tons of thrusters. And I just, I, I just, I love this appearance. I I used to think that my my most favorite uh, Wave Rider form of any uh, kit was going to be the uh, Zeta Plus C1 type, but I honestly think that this one uh, might be stealing that. Alright, and as we can see the Rezo has no problem being mounted to an action base and it's able to do this because of that uh, specialty connector that I mentioned a little bit ago and it looks really nice on there. Uh, it's easy to see, you know, at least in this mode, why someone would rather have it displayed like this, I think, than uh, in its mobile suit mode. Alright, and uh, what I basically wanted to do here was to uh, show how easy it is to switch it over from its um, B unit to the A unit. So, um, these guys here just slide off. which uh, I believe these are like little extra cannon pods or something. But anyways, these come off. Alright. 
And then next, these uh, cannons can come off. And they just pop out like so. Okay. And then we're going to take these guys off right here. And they kind of give you some trouble, but just pop that off. By the way, perfect time to mention, it kind of looks like a pterodactyl on uh, steroids or something, doesn't it? Anyways, uh, that's basically all you have to remove off. There is two pieces that look like this, and all they do is block these holes here and there. And I already have them off just uh, for the ease of this video, but um, they are there should you want to uh, keep those blocked up. So now we've got our A components. And let's take a look at this. So where we replaced these brackets here, we have new ones that need to go in its place. And those will connect just like so, got that upside down. All right, those will connect like that. We've got our um, missile pods here that again have the uh, uh, large mega beam saber thing attached to it. And we've got our missile pods that can open. And these guys plug into those um, empty holes I mentioned a little bit ago. And you just peg it in like so. Same thing for the one over here. Easy enough. And then these uh, missile pods just clip on to where the um, old ones uh, came off. The old uh, cannons, I believe. And they just slide on like so. And there you have it. Now it can also, uh, in this mode, it's supposed to have the gun attached to it. I'm trying to keep this on camera. And you fold the trigger in on the gun and it has this little clip right down there and that just pegs into the shield like so and then should we want our uh... let's see All right. now we can have it mounted in that configuration on the action base so, you know, in, in some ways it's kind of hard to tell which one I like better. I was a huge fan of the uh, Defensor B unit, but I can easily see why other people would be attracted to the Defensor A unit. Um, in some ways, I think I kind of like this unit better. Alright, and uh, final thoughts on this kit. Um, like I said earlier, this kit is a little bit more expensive, but... Uh, again, taking into consideration that um, really we're getting what we should be getting is is this kit in two forms. I mean, the band AI that I've known and seen over the years normally would have sold this as two different kits. So I think that in itself is reason enough to purchase it. Um, I love the backpack. I think uh, again, I just to me. This has got to be my my favorite backpack of all time on any Gundam kit you're ever going to see. Um, it's it's just beautiful. I mean, I don't really know how else to describe it. 
it's 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 a wonderful design the the rezel itself uh, i remember when it first came out i wasn't too attracted to it but they changed the backpack they added um what i think are also the best um side skirts that we'll ever see on a kit um it just it makes it it makes it an amazing looking kit um i do not like the transformation sequence at all um i think it's probably the worst transformation thing i've ever had uh, to do on a kit um, it's kind of shaky and it falls apart while you're trying to do it there's a lot of fiddling uh, there's a lot of trying to get everything just perfect um, so that's a downside however once you get it perfect and once you get it where you want it it just it looks beautiful I mean there's no there's no getting around it it looks it definitely belongs on my shelf it's uh, I, I don't do a kit of the year or anything like that, but if I was to do one, this would be a very strong contender. I, I will be, I, I'm obviously I'd be happy if later on I got a kit this year from Bandai like this that made me more pleased than this one. But I also have a really hard time thinking about what they could come out with that would top this for for the money and for what you get. Um, it's a wonderful kit. I highly recommend it. Um, go watch Gundam Unicorn Episode 6 if you haven't seen it. That came out uh, just a little bit ago. Uh, it's not the most action-packed episode, but we get to see a lot of uh, dialogue and some story progression. So we get to see the introduction of the full armor unicorn anyways, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, go ahead and watch it. If you haven't seen it, there's only one episode left, and I think we're going to have to wait another year <laughs> to see that. So um yeah i hope you uh, i hope you enjoyed it i hope you appreciated the review um my next review or uh, video i should say isn't really going to be about gundam so i hope you guys are kind of interested in it uh, i said a while ago that i wanted to do uh more modeling and kind of branch out into different stuff so if you guys remember i had uh some videos about uh building a uh, Demoisel or Demoisel. It was a wooden airplane and I built a couple of uh, plastic uh, airplanes after that I think. And then I kind of started going back into Gundam. Well, I have something else planned that um, it's not Gundam related by any means but it hopefully captures the essence uh, let's say of what um, what hobby is uh, what uh, working on model kits is so there's going to be uh, painting seam filling uh, we're going to have lights uh, electronics um, no sound um, but we'll have uh, some custom bases made um, it'll be some cool stuff if, if uh, you guys are interested in um, you know just how to do more than this but you know how to make some other style of kits i think you'll really appreciate them uh, anyways that is going to do it uh, for my review of this kit. I hope you guys appreciated it. If you uh, are thinking about purchasing this kit, I totally recommend it. It's a fun kit. Uh, it's a lot of fun building, and um, it gets a lot of enjoyment. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time.